Hi everyone, welcome to February STEAM Lab Candy Science. We're going to begin shortly in just a minute or two. Um, go ahead and have your supplies ready. Miss Lorena has uh, linked the sheet in the chat. So take a look at that. And if you don't have all the supplies, you can follow along with us and just watch how the activities are done. We are recording, so it will be available on YouTube. You can watch it at a later time and do the, do the experiments then if you don't have your materials here today. All right, so I'll give you a few more minutes to get everything set up and we are going to get started soon. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm back. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody has their materials ready. Um, and we are doing three activities today. The first one is called Grow a Bear. Number two is called Busy Dip. And number three is called Mentos Magic. So those are the three activities we will be doing. And I have turned on closed captioning. So if you are on Zoom, there should be a button that you can turn on the uh, CC, closed captioning, if you need to follow along by reading the text. Um, if you're also watching on Zoom, you should be able to enable the closed captioning on there as well. All right, so by a show of hands, please raise your hand if you are ready to get started. Okay, I see some hands going up. And just a reminder, this, all of our activities are recommended for ages seven and up with some parental um, help or guidance. So if your caretaker is there or your parent is there, please make sure they are close to you and they can help you with any of our activities today. All right, we will go ahead and get started. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Oops. Okay. Sorry, one second. Let me just help you with any of our activities today. All right. We will go ahead and get started. I'm going to stop sharing this. All right. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my science cam. Why does it keep doing that? Hold on one second. Okay, here we go. All right, so activity one is grow a bear. So for this, we are going to need salt, water, sugar, three small glasses or containers, a tablespoon, a regular spoon, and some gummy bears. So I'm going to switch over to my science cam and um, you'll see I'll be doing the experiments over there. Okay. Okay. So here, so what I'm going to be using are three mason jars. 
since mason jars are microwave safe. So I'm just gonna take off the caps. If you have, um, you can also use mugs. If you have mugs or other small cups or that are glass, anything that's microwave safe will work. Right. So I have my three jars there. And then I have my sugar. I'm just using regular granulated sugar. I have some regular table salt. You can also use sea salt if you have that. Here I have some gummy bears and my tablespoon. Okay. All right, so first things first, we are going to fill each glass with a little bit of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these over to the sink and fill them up. Okay, so here we have our three glasses that have the water in it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first glass. So I'm actually gonna put it in a row like this. Okay, so let's say, well, one glass we're not gonna do anything with. So let's take this one right here, the one in the middle. We're gonna microwave this for one minute. And please be careful because this will get hot, so make sure you have somebody to help you with the with the, once it's been microwaved, okay? So one minute. Go ahead and either type them in the text to the QA or put them in the chat. And I will go ahead and bring the sugar. We're going to use the sugar one first. Okay, is everyone with me? So I have my uh, glass of water that I've heated for one minute and it is warm, so just be careful. We are going to take our tablespoon and we are going to take one tablespoon of granulated sugar and put it into the glass. Right here. And after we've done that, we are going to stir it slowly until all the sugar has melted. So go ahead and do one tablespoon first. Let me grab my spoon. All right, I forgot, we also need a spoon. So here we go. We're gonna stir it. This might take a little while, so we just have to be patient, but we're gonna stir it until it's all dissolved. So this activity, um, you actually won't see the results until 24 hours from now. So we're doing the prep work, and that way you guys can check on the results tomorrow. But I went ahead and did this experiment yesterday, so I will share with you what is going to happen with this experiment or what kind of results you should see. All right. 
So as you can see in here, it looks pretty clear. It looks like all the sugar has dissolved. So we're gonna put in the next tablespoon of sugar. All right, here's the next tablespoon of sugar. And keep stirring. Remember to be careful because the glass is still pretty warm. So stir. Okay, that looks pretty good. See how it's pretty clear? So let's go ahead and put in our last tablespoon of sugar. All right, our final tablespoon. All right, back to stirring. How's everybody doing? Is your water getting clear and all the sugars dissolved? Okay, let's take a look. That looks pretty good. Is yours all melted? All right, let me just look again. Yep, yeah, I think it's all dissolved in there. So it's nice and clear. Okay, so that is our sugar. And that is our plain water. So plain water, sugar, and now we have glass number three. So with glass number three, we are going to do salt in this one now. So we need to get our tablespoon back out and we're gonna add salt to that mixture. Let me just wipe this down. So if you have some leftover um, sugar on your tablespoon, make sure you wipe it off because we don't want any of the sugar in this next mixture. Okay, so clean it off nice and good. So Bree says three tablespoons of sugar into one container, yes. And you wanna add it one tablespoon at a time and stir it in so that it gets dissolved. So if you put it in all at once, it's gonna take a lot uh, longer for it to dissolve. So that's why we're doing it slowly. We're just pacing it out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and heat up our third jar here for again, one minute. A little bit of sugar here. Okay, so for our salt. And then also make sure rinse off spoon and let's have a different spoon that you're going to use. So I'm going to rinse this off to make sure that there's no sugar left. Okay, here we have our next nice and toasty glass of water. Our stirring spoon. Okay, so we are going to do 
three tablespoons of salt. Do it this way. And we're gonna add it one at a time again and stir it until it is completely dissolved and your water is clear. Okay, so here's our first tablespoon. And let's start stirring. And just to let you all know, while we are working on this, Thursday on set the 17th, it's actually National Random Acts of Kindness Day. So if you're feeling extra kind and extra nice, do something kind for somebody else on Thursday. All right, so that looks really clear. We're gonna move on to our second tablespoon of salt. There we go. So we're gonna make this water extra, extra salty. All right, there's the second one and stir again. What's the second one? Uh, do you mean what's in the second cup or what are we using in the second one? Okay, so this one is just plain water that we added. This one was plain water and sugar. So we put three tablespoons of sugar into this glass. Now we're on our third glass and this one is water and salt. Okay, so we're in the process of dissolving the salt. So we're gonna keep stirring. Salt takes a little bit longer to dissolve in the water. I found that out yesterday. I was stirring for a bit longer. This takes a little bit more patience. And we don't want to put this back in the microwave and heat it again because it'll actually create more salt crystals, which is not what we want. And just with a little bit of patience, we're going to get there. Okay, we're almost there. There's still a little bit at the bottom, so I'm just going to keep stirring. Is everybody with me? Raise your hand if you are on the same step as me. Okay, I think all of my salt is dissolved. That's pretty clear now. Does everybody have some clear salt water? Okay. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we are going to drop one gummy bear into each of the three glasses. So I'm gonna put an orange gummy bear into this one. Let's see, let's do, let's do green. 
So I have a green one that I'm going to put in this mixture. And then I have yellow. Oops. And I'm going to put it into this one. Okay, so if you have, let's see, if you have like a post-it or if you have some blue tape, you can tape a little piece of tape or a note onto each one of these jars so that you know that this is plain water, sugar water, and salt water, okay? So we're gonna let these gummy bears just kinda relax in their little spa, their little pool of water. Oops, there he is. Okay, so come back to this in 24 hours. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what happened from yesterday. Okay, so here we go. I'm not sure you can see it. Let me close the blinds so that you can see better. That's better. Okay, so I labeled my little cups. This one was plain water. Okay, can you guys even see the gummy bear anymore? Let me move this. Kind of, it's, it's kind of right there. I'm gonna fish it out in just a second. Here we go, let's see. This one was the sugar water. Okay, and this one is the salt water. So he is still pretty much intact. Okay, let me fish them out now so we can see what they look like. Let's see, let me find the dish. Okay, I'm gonna put it on this plate. All right, so there's the salt water guy. Here is the sugar water. And let me grab one of the regular water. All right, <laughs> he kind of fell apart a little bit, but anyways. All right, so that is our results. So again, this is water, sugar water, and salt water. Now I forgot to go over the scientific method, but whenever you're doing an experiment, like even when you're at school and you have chemistry or physics class, you're gonna go through a list of things when you're doing experiments. So when you have a problem, you want to solve it. So you're going to do create a hypothesis of what's going to happen in your experiment before you do it. Now, did you think that this is what was going to happen? And I'll explain what actually uh, was in play here. So this experiment is it's exploring osmosis. And osmosis is a chemistry term for the motion of water through a barrier. So the barrier being the outside of the gummy bear. So most sugary candy dissolves in water. So like you saw here, this one was in water and it pretty much, it's falling apart. Um, but it's not completely dissolved. So gummy bears are an exception. And this is because gummy bears are made with gelatin. So when a gummy bear is made, the gelatin and the water are heated and mixed together. When the mixture cools, the water actually leaves the candy and the candy hardens and becomes a gummy or chewy um, substance and texture. 
So when you put a gummy bear in water, it is a soluble and the water molecules are the solvent. So because the gummy bear doesn't contain water, the water is now moving into the bear by the process of osmosis. So gummy bears have a semi-permeable membrane, which means that their surface has tiny, tiny little holes in it. And when you're putting it into water, the water is now trying to go into those little holes and it basically expanding it out. So that's what happened to here because it was pure water. So it basically pulled it all into itself and it's kind of disintegrating slowly. Um, so now that we're gonna look at the salt water, well, with salt water, you still have water and sugar that's inside of the bear, but the outside of the bear, you have water and salt. Salt molecules are much smaller than sugar molecules, so more of them will dissolve in water. So some of the water was able to get in, but not as much. And that's because of the salt. I'm sorry, the sugar. <laughs> this is the salt one. So this one pretty much stayed. Oh, let me find, let me let's compare with a with an original size gummy bear. So here's the size of the original gummy bear that we started with. So as you can see, it actually, it shrunk quite a bit. All right, so that is it for activity one. Good job, everyone. Um, you'll come back to your results in 24 hours and you should see something very, very similar. Okay, we're gonna move on to activity number two. Uh, that one is the fizzy cup. Let's see, if you only have two gummy bears, that's okay. You can put it, you can do just like the sugar and the salt part of it if you want to. Because that way you can see the two differences. So for fizzy pop, you are going to need powdered sugar, a jello packet, baking soda, citric acid, a teaspoon, a lollipop or a red vine candy, and a small bowl. All right, so go ahead and grab all those items and I will meet you back here in a few minutes. Okay, somebody asked if there is a substitute for citric acid. Um, in this case, no, because we need it in the powder form. So, which is basically like this. Let's see, it looks like that. Um, because we're making a dry mixture. Taste-wise, citric acid is like, um, like lemon juice or lime juice. But if you use that in this mixture, it's gonna, it's gonna mess up what we're trying to do here though. But that's okay, if you don't have it this time, not to worry. 
you can just follow along with us. Okay, if you're ready to get started, go ahead and put your hand up in Zoom. All right, so let's go over the ingredients. So we have powdered sugar. We have a jello packet right here. So I chose orange flavored. We have baking soda. We have citric acid. And you can actually get, I think I got this at Target. So they have it in the, where did I get it? It's for, for canning. So I think wherever they have like the mason jars, the, um, the items you need for canning or creating stuff like that that's where they have this i have one lollipop a small bowl and some measuring so we're going to need the tablespoon one, or teaspoon one i'm sorry teaspoon okay all right little packets of cooling and uh Sugar are mostly citric acid. Yeah, I mean, those are pre-made, so they're they're already making all the stuff together. Citric acid is in a lot of stuff. All your sour candy, that's all citric acid. But we're gonna be making our own. So that's why you need it by itself in its dry form. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add two teaspoons of jello powder one half teaspoon of citric acid, three teaspoons of powdered sugar, and one half teaspoon of baking soda into the bowl, and we're going to mix well. So here we go. Let's open up the jello. I'm just gonna do a small tear on the side because I don't want to use, I'm not gonna be using all of this. All right. Sorry, the sun is still in the way. So that's that. Let's take our teaspoon. And we are doing two, te two teaspoons of the jello powder. So here's one. and two, okay? And then put the rest aside. You can actually save your Jello and make it so it doesn't have to go to waste. Okay, next we're gonna do half a tablespoon of citric acid. Okay. So if you don't have a half a teaspoon, if you wanna just use uh, the same one teaspoon, that's okay, just pour it in, just do it halfway. I do happen to have a one half teaspoon, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, one half teaspoon. And that is a white powder. <coughs> and be careful when you're pouring it in because if you breathe it in, it's gonna make you wanna sneeze three teaspoons of powdered sugar. There's one. Two, and three. Oops, some of it got stuck. All right, so there's the powdered sugar. 
And the final thing we need is the baking soda. So half a teaspoon of baking soda. There's our baking soda. Half a teaspoon. So again, if you have this measuring cup, it's going to be this half or just fill up your one teaspoon halfway. Okay. Okay. And add that in. All right. Just put everything else aside. Let me grab a spoon and we're going to mix that up. Okay, so some of the powdered sugar is kind of clumpy. So just go ahead and start mixing. Mix it up really, 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 really well. Oh, so before we actually get to the end part, why don't we go ahead and make a hypothesis on what we're going to be doing or what we're going to experiencing soon. What's gonna happen with this mixture? Okay, let's see here. I have a couple of questions here. Can you please repeat the ingredients amount? So the ingredient amount again is two teaspoons of jello powder. One half teaspoon of citric acid. Okay, Miss Lorena is going to put it in the chat. Thank you, Miss Lorena. And we also have a sheet that you can click to access so that you can see all the entire ingredients list, but she'll put it in the chat right now. Okay, so here's our mixture. I don't think you can tell, but it's a very, very slight orange in the jello. Okay, so back to the hypothesis. We're obviously gonna be doing something with this lollipop here. We are going to be dipping this into the mixture. So tell me, what do you think is going to happen? Anyone have a guess? Okay, I think that's pretty well mixed. Just see on YouTube. Anybody has guessed? Okay. Doesn't seem like anybody on YouTube is having problems. Okay, so we have one, one hypothesis. When you coat the lollipop with the fizzy dip, the lollipop will fizz. That's a good one. Does anybody else have a hypothesis before we, before we start and see what happens? Uh, for baking soda, it is one half teaspoon. Here, let me type it out for you all. So one teaspoon jello powder. Teaspoon. 
it. Okay, there we go. Can everybody see that? So again, the ingredients are two, two tablespoons of jello powder, your choice of any flavor. Two, one half tea table, uh, one half teaspoon of citric acid, three teaspoons of powdered sugar, one half teaspoon of baking soda. All right, so does anybody have any more hypothesis to share? If not, we'll go ahead and We'll whip out our lollipop. Or if you don't have a lollipop, you just have like a red vine or something, some kind of candy to stick in. That'll work. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to take out my lollipop. Something that's a little bit sticky to stick in here so that way the mixture will cling on to the piece of candy. You, you could probably even use, hmm, what else? Like a Jolly Rancher? Okay, I'm gonna stick it in. See if I can get some. All right, and what you're gonna do is you are going to taste this. So go ahead and give this mixture a try. Okay, tell me in the chat, what are you experiencing when you put this in? And make sure you kind of get a good amount. So I have coded this pretty well. Mm. Tastes pretty good. Have you guys tried your mixture? Fizzling, yes. That is exactly what I'm experiencing too. A nice little foamy fizz. And what kind of flavor jello did, did you guys get? So mine's orange again. And does it taste good? Okay, so, <laughs> excuse me. We are going to explore the science behind the mixture we just made. So, when you put your candy into your mouth, a chemical reaction is occurring when the powders are mixing with your saliva. When you mix acids and bases together, they create carbon dioxide bubbles. Carbon dioxide is the name of the gas that you exhale. So when you mix baking soda, citric acid together with your saliva, it's creating carbon dioxide bubbles in your mouth that feel like fizzing. All right, so if you guys were able to create your fizzy candy, it's basically like candy, then you were successful. I don't know if you've ever bought those, I forget what they're called, but I used to buy them. They were little individually wrapped candies. So they're hard candies on the outside, but then when you get to the center, it's got that fizzy um, powder, which is exactly what you just made yourself. Pop rocks are actually a little bit different. I believe for pop rocks, those are, the way that they create it, it's different, I forget, but slightly different. Zots, yes. Thank you, Miss Lorena. They are called Zots, Zots candy. I loved Zots candy. All right, so good job, everyone. All right, don't eat too much of that. It's a lot of sugar. Okay, we are moving on to our last activity, which is called Mentos Magic. For this one, we are going to need 
Mentos candy, two balloons, two rubber bands, about a 20 ounce bottle of diet soda, one empty 20 ounce bottle, and a 12 inch ruler, which is optional. So if you have a ruler, great, because we're gonna see if we can measure what we're gonna be doing. If not, not to worry, because then you can just use your eyes to uh, guesstimate. Okay. And I actually need just a couple more items. So just a warning, this could get messy. Um, so make sure you have a nice surface where in case, just in case, if your soda leaks out of the bottle or your balloon doesn't stay on, because we're gonna be putting balloons on top of these, if they don't stay on with your rubber bands, be ready with a mop and some cleaning solution. All right, I'll be right back. I just have to grab two more things. Okay, let's see here. So I actually brought over bin just in case. Let me change the camera angle a little bit. Okay, so again, we have two bottles here. We have our, I couldn't find a bottle of Coke. So I found this one in the can. So you just need Diet Coke, Diet Soda, Mentos, some balloons. You need at least two. And then a ruler if you want to measure, okay? All right, so how many of you have seen the Mentos in diet soda experiment before or just explodes like crazy? How many have seen that? Okay, a few of you, good. Well, we definitely don't wanna have exploding soda in the library, so we are going to be putting the rubber band, or I'm sorry, the balloons on top of them so that we can still see what's happening, but contain the mess, okay? So first things first, take your balloons and give them a good stretch because we were going to need them to blow up nicely. So go ahead and stretch them out. this. All right, and I'm going to do it to, I'm going to use this green one here. Okay, so go ahead and stretch out your balloon. You want to make sure that they're going to inflate very nicely. Give it a good stretch. Okay. Next, we are going to pour. So if you have a bottle, you want to pour out half of the Diet Coke into the other one. But because since I only have the can, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pour some into this. Okay. 
see. Just to pour about half of it in. So I have about this much. Okay. Sorry, let's see like this. So about that much soda in there. Okay. Now we are going to put one Mentos inside balloon number one. So here's balloon number one. Take your Mentos, go ahead and crack it open. Now, does anybody have a hypothesis on what is going to happen when we put the Mentos into the soda? Besides, oops, besides the explosion, do you have any, any idea of why it's gonna explode? Okay, so here's the Mentos. Make sure you work it into the main balloon center. Okay, so we got one in there. Take your other balloon, and we're gonna put two Mentos into this one. Okay, explosion, explosion. Yeah, there is gonna be an explosion. So here we have one. And we have two. And you can eat the rest of the Mentos candy yourself, or you can do this experiment without using balloons, but make sure you do it outside in the yard. Okay, so here we go. We have our two Mentos are in here. So we have one and two, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and we need to fill this second bottle with a little bit of the Diet Coke as well. So if you have just one bottle of Diet Coke, you're basically going to split it between the two bottles because I only have the one can. I have to split it myself manually between these two. It's hard to tell with all the fizzing. I think that's about, I just have to wait till they're done fizzing to see if it's the same amount. This one might need a little bit more. Okay, that looks about even. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place balloon one over the mouth of this bottle and balloon two is, go is going to go over this mouth and we are going to take our rubber bands. So I have these rubber bands here and we're going to wrap it around. So we wanna make sure that the balloons are on fairly tight, okay? Let me just move this. And don't let the Mentos go into the bottle yet, okay? So try to get it on. So I have it on about like that, okay? And you're gonna take your rubber band right here Okay, so do this very carefully. You know, what you could also do is twist the balloon so that it doesn't accidentally fall in. All right, so wrap that balloon. I'm sorry, wrap the rubber band around the balloon. Get someone to help you if you need to. It can be tricky, especially when it's getting tighter. There we go. It's almost there. Okay. And kind of get the uh, rubber bands into the groove so that it has a nice good grip on the balloon. Okay. So that's the first one. And as you can see, it's still twisted. So the Mentos is nice and safe inside there. All right, let's do that to the second one. Okay, again, you can 
give it a little twist and then get it onto the mouth. And you don't want to, oh, see what I accidentally did? I cut my balloon. So let me switch it to that extra one. That's exactly what I was afraid of. So if you have an extra balloon, that's perfect. Again, I'm gonna stretch this one out. Okay. Put your two mint toasts in here. Carefully get it around the mouth. This bottle is a little bit trickier. I think the normal um, Diet Coke bottles are much easier to work with because they have a more of a narrow. And yes, you don't want to drink it. I don't think it's going to taste very good. Not that it's not uh, drinkable. It's not poisonous or anything, but I don't know if you like minty soda. Minty and more sugary soda. I wouldn't recommend drinking it. Okay. Here we go. So we have the two in the pink one and the one in the red one. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in here just in case. Well, actually, maybe I don't need this. If anything bad happens, I'll just put this on top. But we don't want, we don't think anything bad's going to happen, right? Okay. So we put one Mentos in here, two Mentos in here. Do you think? that the number of Mentos affects what's gonna happen? Yes or no? Okay. All right, so we're gonna find out. Are you guys ready? Here we go, let's do, let's do number one first and see what happens. Okay, here comes the drop. You see it's fizzing down here. I might not have had enough soda. Either that or I might have waited too long. Is everybody else's blowing up a little bit? So you can see I'm moving my hand away from the balloon. It's a slow reaction, but this is what's happening. Is your balloon blowing up a little bit? A little bit, okay. I think I probably needed more soda. That's all right. So, but the basic thing that's happening is that it's create something's happening to put air into this balloon. So let's try it with two Mentos. They'll go down. One and two. Hey, watch what happens to our balloon. Did your balloons at least inflate?
Okay. So I think what happened is because I split it because I was afraid that it was going to be too potent. Um, the reaction that we're having is on a much smaller scale, but this is exactly what's supposed to happen is that the Mentos is reacting with the Diet Coke and it's creating some kind of chemical reaction, which is making the balloons inflate. Okay, so the bubbles are made of a gas called carbon dioxide. So we essentially have carbon dioxide in the soda, okay? The soda company puts carbon dioxide in the soda to make the soda fuzzy. So it's carbonated water mixed with um, sugar syrups. And the Mentos candy are not smooth. So they have bumps and ridges on the outside of their shells. And if you use a microscope, you can see that they actually have tiny little dents and scratches and bumps on them. So when the Mentos candy sinks to, into the bottle and goes down to the bottom, the carbon dioxide molecules collect in these little grooves and dents and they form more bubbles which rise to the surface. So the candy causes the production of more and more carbon dioxide bubbles and the rising bubbles react with the carbon dioxide that is also dissolved in the soda to cause more carbon dioxide to be freed and creates even more bubbles resulting in an explosion. So again, we didn't have the explosion version, but if you take Mentos and you drop it directly into, let's say like a two liter or a full bottle of soda, you are going to have one heck of an explosion. All right, so inside these little, these little, um, balloons is carbon dioxide. So that's what was created in here. So it's all through here. All right, well, sorry, that was a little bit less exciting, but at least you got to see what happened. And if you wanna measure, so does the amount of Mentos make a difference? Let's see, it's about two inches. This one, no, oh, I can't see in the finder. It's about the same. So it actually doesn't make a difference. All right, well, that was the end of our experiment number three. Thank you everyone for joining me. Um, I hope you had a fun time with this. We have another STEAM lab next month, which we are, it's green theme. So it's called green science, but uh, we're just going to be doing a lot of fun things that are green themed because of St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So again, if you want to try to, oops, let's see here, do these again at home, go ahead. We have it up on YouTube. You can rewatch it and do all the experiments again. All right, well, thank you for joining me, everyone. I hope you had fun. You can try the Mentos one again at home, do it outside, maybe on your lawn. Okay, bye, have a good